Thank you, Kate. So, Michelle, let's get it started. Do you wish to uh, make us a, a presentation of, have, of your yeah. project? I have a presentation and I, we have surprise guests from California and South Africa here that I may embarrass with some of my photos from this presentation, <laughs> um, but that makes me happy. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. It's been a while since I've presented. So, okay. Okay, so obviously everyone that's here knows that I'm one of the co-founders of Kumari and Kumari were based in Catania, Sicily, the second largest uh, city of Sicily, the island in Italy. Um, and so this co-living community, it's a house for travelers as well as a co-working place is for persons that identify as female. This is who we prioritize and it is, has been created as an option for these people that identify as female to have this new space as an option for co-living or while they're traveling, um, but mostly our guests so far have been working. So I thought it best to give the background of why Kumari, if there's multiple reasons why and, and why I've created this space because of my own personal um, experiences as a digital nomad um, and also living in, in co-living spaces briefly as well as obviously there weren't as many um, a few years ago. So I'm just going to give a bit a background story on myself to explain why Kumari. Uh, so I became a digital nomad before it was a thing, I suppose, in 2006, when I became an international correspondent with a publishing company for Hong Kong. Um, then my career kept going in that field where I was moving 11 or traveling 11 months of the year, moving to a new country every, every several months, living mostly in corporate assigned apartments because um, it, it was before smartphones and Airbnb that I was moving and working um, in various countries and um, all over Asia, Australia, uh, North America, as well as Europe. So um, oh, no, it's not clicking. So here we go. So in 2006, it all started. So here you, I'm embarrassing myself with a photo. So I was living in the Netherlands as this is the, the job I had was you have to work, live in a corporate apartment that was very Ikea and white and basic. And then I was on the road every day. This was one of my business meetings. After the business meeting, I happened to pop by a carnival in Southern uh, Netherlands. And these women took me in for the day and painted my cheeks red, gave me a lot of alcohol and hard boiled eggs. But it, it was the, the digital nomad experience of being in these cultures but then I, I just left a meeting and, and later I jumped on a train and went back to Amsterdam. But this was the lifestyle I had for a, a really long time as this started in 2006. Um, so Elizabeth on here will kill me for this one. But we also worked in Malaysia, for example, and we really, really struggled to find proper housing as professionals needing to live in Kuala Lumpur. And so we ended up living in this uh, mall, shopping mall called the Brajaya. And this is Elizabeth showing off um, sarcastically our home in the shopping mall because there just really was a lack of spaces to be able to be professionals and have all the things we needed and comfort in Malaysia at the time. So these are the, the problems that we were always facing throughout the, the time in um, being digital nomads as a profession. So later on, Elizabeth and I um, started our own firm where we employed digital nomads and our own publishing firms. And then we would also house the digital nomads ourselves. And so we were using corporate apartments and signing crazy leases that you know we really didn't wanna get ourselves into, but it was the only option. Then Airbnb came along and that was a bit better. But again, nothing really felt like home. It was really hard to find things that were comfortable. Um, but this is where my, I just wanna explain where my background's coming from is that I had to find my own housing. Then I had to find housing for these women you can see here. Um, thankfully, we have also a very female dominated industry. So also where Kumari comes from, it's very natural for me to form communities and bonds um, with women that are very diverse from different countries and backgrounds. Um, we also would often have gatherings around the world together too, which also has really helped me um, in understanding and building Kumari. So <laughs> in our struggles too, back when we were finding housing for our own business was again, that lack of soul 
um, lack of feeling at home. Elizabeth and I joked around about we always wanted a home and a hotel mixed, a home tell where you have the luxuries of a hotel, but you feel at home. And so this is really where I wanted to go with Kumari. Um, so I started maybe five years ago spending more time um, in holistic environments. This is me uh, working on a farm actually in Northern Scotland for a little while and living in a home there to get to know uh, other businesses where people housed guests and had something of cultural immersion. So I did that um, in different places around the world as well as here in Sicily. Um, I also became a yoga instructor and just started learning more holistic ways of helping people versus just my corporate career of the past. So um, I actually came to Sicily as a digital nomad by myself um, uh, several years ago and stayed on an eco farm on the side of Etna, where years later, I, I wouldn't know at the time, I bought my own farm actually just down the road from this farm. And now these people are my friends. And um, just a further step in me finding a, a home for myself after being a digital nomad since 2006. I bought this farm um, in 2018 and um, then also sold our, my business, Elizabeth and I sold our business in 2019, which allowed me to purchase Kumari. So if no one knows where Catania is and where Kumari is, um, this is the map of Sicily and the arrow obviously is towards Catania because I know a lot of people are not familiar yet with Sicily, but we know that you will be soon. And we purchased Kumari because Catania is a very central location for the island. So travelers could stay here, our guests could base here, but then have very good connections for bus or train around the island. And we're about an eight minute car drive from an international airport, Catania International Airport. So we bought an urban location um, after we bought a uh, an olive tree farm, which was our first location. And this is the, the home base of Kumari, which then we began uh, a renovation um, over the last year. So when we bought Kumari, it was abandoned for eight years. This is one of the, the bedrooms. Um, it was owned by two sisters and they didn't have children. So when, when they were old enough, they had to leave and it was left as is. So we had a, a large construction reconstruction that we did. We added bathrooms. So now we're three bedrooms, three bathrooms. And then we really worked with local artisans to create some of the furniture as bespoke and worked with local, local artists to make the house have that soul, that boutique hotel feeling, but still being a co-living environment that we were really looking for myself and my partner, uh, Igor Gripaldi, who is an architect. So um, as you can see, this is what we turned that room into, what you had just seen the last picture. This is now the complete version of the room um, where we have a mural by uh, Alberto Ruche, a local muralist, and um, is in several of our rooms. He has done the work, but we also created this environment where the women um, that come and stay can have a very holistic and relaxing space in a very busy city. We're only 300,000 people and it is where everyone comes in the region to go out at night and for culture, but you can come into Kumari and really relax. And that was the point of how we, we designed um, our rooms. So, so far, um, you know, we, we did open our doors during COVID. We purchased this, uh, we put our offer pre-COVID. Then they told us our loan was approved during the pandemic, which was a really interesting time to choose to buy uh, something for tourism. But we have not open now four months and um, this is one of our most popular rooms, but we have had women from 10 different countries uh, come in only four months time. Most people um, at least half have extended their stay after coming. They then decide to come and stay longer. We had one woman um, from Singapore come back three separate times after her first visit, after traveling in other parts of Europe, she kept coming back to Kumari. So um, the space is, is really working, needless to say, so far. Um, and we do have a lot of um, visions for the future because of this, this high interest um, and not from just one culture of women, but women from 10 different countries so far. And now we're also booked for the first few months in, of the new year with really also interesting 
uh, professionals and interesting artists um, are booking at Kumari. And we've even had artists leave um, their works here too, which is, is one of our goals as well um, and makes us really happy that they want to leave a piece of them here too. So, you know, from what we were missing back when I was working with Elizabeth, Colette and Andrea on here all different times as digital nomads is what we, what I really wanted to focus on with Kumari was having it feel like a home, but luxurious enough that these women that are professionals, serious women could get their work done, but then really feel relaxed when it's time off. So most women are usually coming together around our kitchen table, just naturally. And we also are breaking the age barriers, multi-generational co-living, which is quite hard. And we've had um, most of our visitors from th their thirties up until their sixties of interest. So um, what's interesting because it is dedicated to females is that we're able to really easily break age barriers. And that was an unexpected um, perk of Kumari that I'm um, quite happy about. So right now we are three bedrooms and so we are quite small. Um, and that's also why we can book up quite fast, but we do see the need to expand or at least the interest because um, the feedback of the women have been that if they could know there was a Kumari in other cities, they would immediately plan to then go stay at another Kumari. Um, the feedback has really been the safety aspects of not locking their door at night of um, just really knowing they can socialize in, Kat in Catania, but then come back and have their, their holistic spaces, their home. Um, most all the women staying have take conference calls all day, but there's enough space here to do that, that they're able to do that. So um, then we have some other people that aren't working full-time and are more artistic and they're usually immersing themselves in the culture and then working in the house as well. So it's a bit of a mix. Um, so moving forward, this is the original farm we bought um, on the side of Mount Etna, which is Europe's most active volcano. And this is my first purchase in Sicily um, and my dream of having an olive tree farm and having a holistic retreat space here for co-living and for cultural immersion. Um, but of course, buying an 1800s wine mill is a very big project and so we have not started this yet but we plan to start this immediately next year and so this is the next kumari phase that um, we'll be looking to do which is in a very rural setting at the start of the um, etna rosso etna dock wine trail that goes through um, the north side of Mount Etna and near the very famous city Taramina on the sea. Um, so we're from this farm about 15 minutes to the sea, but we're also um, five minutes from a winery. So it's amazing. And this is how the project um, will look. Of course, we're working again with my partner, um, Igor Gripaldi and with his firm, uh, Gripaldi Vivera Architects. And so this space will be, um, using the original wine mill to create a new space of gathering, but keeping the tradition of where, what was the space originally, which was to, to make wine. So this will be coming next and we will be inviting um, international investors to participate in this uh, rural project to immerse in rural Sicilian culture, which is the culture we actually really love the most and feel the most passionate about. And we see a resurgence in people appreciating the values of what can grow on this island and how holistic this island is, especially with Volcana Etna and um, what she provides. So I know, I know I've uh, said a lot, but I really wanted to cover kind of where I come from because a lot of people ask me, well, why only women? Um, it's a lot about my career. It's a lot about my passion of always wanting to put women together from different backgrounds and see what happens. And it always is good, you know, put them around a table and it works different generations. It works. Um, so Kumari is that background, but then also because of our own need in the market that we couldn't find places we felt comfortable. I wanted to, to, to make sure Kumari had all the things I missed when I was staying other places. And that's, so it's a very personal project for me. And every time a woman leaves and I get a lot of thank you notes when they leave, 
um, I, I'm just overwhelmed because I'm like, you like it too? Like, I like it. I didn't know you'd like it. Like, that's amazing. So um, it's been a really wonderful experience. And like I said, it's, it's been great to have women from so many different cultures. And some are really into just trying the food here. Others really want to know the history. Others just want to live in Italy. Um, we've had a lot of guests come to Kumari just for Kumari and they had no intentions of spending time in Sicily. They just found Kumari and felt they needed to come here, which has been the most exciting um, kind of guests that we've had that feel very passionate about the project. And I've even had a few guests um, even want to possibly help us expand. So it's, it's really um, something that the market needed. And if anyone ever wants to talk about the future of this too, with me, I'm always open to that as well. So that's, that's all I have to share with my presentation. I think that we'll do some uh, Q&A, right? <laughs> and sorry for um, it may be embarrassing Colette and Elizabeth with my, some of my photo choices. So. <laughs> Um, can I please ask everybody to unmute for a second and give Michelle a virtual round of applause, please. Yay, well done. Thank you. Well, well done. Well Woo! done, Michelle. It, uh, it looks absolutely great what you did and uh, really congratulations on, on this big achievement. Um, actually, we, we do want our, our uh, guests to uh, to ask questions, so uh, feel free to prepare your questions and ask them directly if you if you wish, um, if you wish to uh, raise hand or raise hand with Zoom uh, little hand or to put it in the in the chat, we will we will take it. Um, in the meantime, yes, Francesco, go for it. Ask your question if you wish. Hi there. Well, congratulations for the project. It seems really cool. And actually, I came across uh, to it when I was in Catania like a month ago when there was like a hurricane. <laughs> and I was like searching for co-working spaces in, in Catania and then Kumari popped up. And I was like intrigued by the architecture. And then I wanted to, to come and see it, but I was just there for a day, so I didn't manage. But I was curious about how it works exactly for like, because it is, it's not exactly woman only, but what's the concept uh, of like being more focused towards woman there? I didn't understand the line between. Sure, yeah, and we get that question a lot. So obviously my, my business partner is a, a man, a Sicilian man. And so he's vital to helping us run, uh, run Kumari. And he's often here because all, all the women like to learn from him about culture. We have events where everyone is welcome. Um, we just prioritize women as the guests and as here is, and we, we do allow one person per day as a co-working um, guest, but we prioritize the women. So, so far we've been, we've been booked with women and, you know, it's an option that didn't exist that we wanted to give them is to have this option. So um, yeah, it's, if a, if a man wants to stay, I guess we'd just be like, you know, you do have other options. Are those options all not good enough for you? Because we don't have options just for us or we haven't historically. And historically, you know, we can all know here in all cultures that the violence against women is the numbers are still too high. So women do need this option. And so that's where we are is that it isn't just community, but it's also an option of extra safety that we provide too. I see, I see. No, it's just that I, uh, I mean, yeah. I didn't understand, I didn't know the whole story. And I was just there and I was like, oh, it's so nice, but it's woman only. <laughs> oh, damn it. Why? Come to an event. <laughs> yeah. I'll do. And then if you have a man uh, coming for, for some night, staying at, your, uh, at Kumari, uh, so what's the reaction of the other women? Are they, are they prepared? Are they, do, you, do you ask them for some sort of like authorization? How, yeah. how, how does it work? I had a woman want to bring her son and then I explained that the other women would need to approve that because they had already booked knowing it would be just women. And then she herself said, you know what, I wouldn't, that's inappropriate. Like we'll just get another place. And then that woman ended up coming to Kumari and spending time here. And then later coming and booking with us by herself because she still wanted to do it. I've had women whose husbands are coming to visit for the weekend 
and they'll ask, well, can he stay at Kumari too? And I'll say, well, you know, then the other women need to be comfortable with that too, because they're booking it thinking there isn't a guy when they go to get their coffee in the morning in their pajamas, because that the women here are very living like free, not thinking ever that they open the door, even though Igor is here quite often, we always tell them when someone's coming over, they, they definitely say that they like that they just never have to be like, oh, whoops, I was in my, you know, pajamas and feeling a little weird, they, they don't feel that way. So, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Francesco, for your question. Um, David, you have your a question as well. Yeah, hi there. Hi there, Michelle. Hi. Congratulations on all the hard work, first Thank of all. Um, just a couple questions for you, pretty simple uh, questions. What are the minimum night stays that you allow? What is the maximum that you allow? Essentially, I'm trying to find what's the average, I guess, lease term. Um, and the second question would be, do you have any revenue streams aside from just the booking? Are you creating uh, revenue elsewhere through maybe alcohol, through food, through, I don't know, any meditation classes, workout classes? Mm -hmm. um, so we have a four night minimum stay. Most of our guests book around 10 to 20 nights, depending. Um, but then again, they're mostly extending. Um, the longest we, you know, we've just been open four months, but we, we wouldn't really want someone staying all year or half year it is more of a temporary space because it is a small intimate house. But, um, with that being said, there are many spaces for working and living. It's just, you know, it isn't a place for all year. So I would say we don't have a maximum at this time, but I would say three months would be what, what we would think would be appropriate. Um, in terms of revenue streams, we have a lot of partners. We actually don't, uh, we don't really ourselves sell so much as we let the community sell to our guests. So we have a lot of artisan partners. Um, we have a local masseuse that comes to Kumari and performs massages here. We have um, a meditation coach. We also have a partner Italian school and we have like a local winery we partner with, um, local kombucha. We are olive oil producers, so we do sell our olive oil, but that's, you know, um, there's, there's various ways that we kind of like to partner with the community to, to get them also meeting other people in the city. So um, at this time, because we're still so new, there isn't other exact revenue streams at Kumari um, that we offer more just partners. Did I answer awesome. all your questions? I'm not sure if there was yeah, another. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Sure. Is anyone else uh, wanting to, to ask a question to Michelle? I know well, I'll the, ask a question yeah, Virginia to been. Michelle then. Uh, I'm curious, how was your experience in setting up a business in Sicily? What, was, uh, what were your challenges and how you uh, went about it? Mm -hmm. um, well, finding a place in Sicily is a challenge because, um, you know, being that it after World War II, Sicily really took a hit financially. There's a lot of abandoned buildings or derelict kind of feeling buildings around. So actually just even finding the appropriate pieces of property, both our farm and our urban space, you really have to consider the neighbors and who you'll be using as your community in the vicinity when you're moving to these kind of areas. So that took a long time. There was a year two years of house hunting to find the correct properties. I'd say it was really fun as well as challenging. Um, and then the renovation itself that we bought a house that was abandoned and left fully furnished. And it was also an office for making um, dentures. So all this equipment and teeth and oh gosh, it was awful. So um, that was that was intense. I'd say the community here is really excited for progress. Um, there's a lot of people investing in Sicily at the moment and new businesses. There's a new restaurant opening up all the time in our area. For example, um, when we bought, we didn't know, but one door down the Michelin restaurant of Catania is moving into what looks like a falling down warehouse. Inside is a Michelin restaurant. They haven't opened the doors yet, but outside is still a falling down warehouse. So like there's this excitement over the regeneration of especially the historic district of Catania. 
And that that's a lot of good energy. But then at the same time, we got a lot of Sicilians and people just being like, why only women? Are there even enough women traveling? Are there even enough women digital nomads? Why would you be so limiting? And a little negativity too of like not understanding the concept or thinking we're just a B and B, things like that. So there was there was a lot of just like we know what we want to do. We're going to do it and just see what happens and um, not really focus on what anyone else is doing here or in general, because when we bought it, it was before COVID. So it was before everybody was going digital nomad. So we already knew that this is what we were going to do. So yeah, all, you know, all the ups and downs of Mm -hmm. doing business and then doing it in Sicily. So also slower. So well, ho- ho- luckily you have this Italian partner with you, Sicilian yeah. partner. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I did. Could... Yeah, I did buy Kumari when I was eight months pregnant, so that was a another <laughs> another challenge in the mix. But we got it done, so it's good. Right. I'm curious to hear more about what were the criteria in your mind uh, for looking for the perfect location. Was it more a uh, uh, having a good proportion between spaces and enough rooms, enough bathrooms, or was it a more like a location criteria or mm. um, price uh, criteria? Uh, what, what really made, a, made it the right property for you? Um, it, yeah, actually we weren't looking at an urban space at the time. We were really focused on rural. And then we saw this opportunity in a neighborhood we believe in that we know is is changing we can see it from what's happening you know around our neighbors and um so it was price in a great part of central downtown Catania where our guests we know could walk easily around and everything's walkable and they can feel safe doing so. The other side of us is the, the largest police station of Catania. So we're five minutes from the train station. So we felt that this would be a place that people wouldn't need to feel like they can't get around. They can easily get out of Catania. They can easily get into Catania. The airport's nearby. There was just, we just were limiting a lot of challenges to get people to come here quickly. And especially in Sicily, there's so many beautiful locations, but once you have to get on a local bus, they're not running very often. So if your space is too remote in Sicily, which is so gorgeous, it is harder to get guests, especially solo traveling guests because normally if you're a couple, you can afford a rental car, but most digital nomads don't want to rent a car. It's very expensive. So they need to be able to quickly access the place they're staying um, or easily at least. So that was a huge factor of choosing the space. But then the space itself, because it was owned by two sisters, it was really loved. We've incorporated, we have their photos everywhere. I'm actually at our, our main working table and there's the framed photos of the sisters everywhere and um, some of their artwork and furniture we've kept in the house too because we wanted to keep that Sicilian kumari soul and kumari means uh, friendship like family and so also whoever stays here it is quite nice when they leave you know we say okay ciao kumari because there's um, now that bond that the women have that they create themselves with each other here and with me and so you know it's just also expanding the the parts of Sicily we love so much which is the culture and the kumari and the kumpari and the the tight relationships people have here with each other and they're they're really beautiful so um Sicily is already so beautiful we wanted to just bring more people to it and to see that through our way which is kumari nice beautiful <laughs> So Kumari e Kumpari, it's, it's, it's a Sicilian dialect for those that uh, yeah. don't know it. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, Kasia, you raised hand. Yes, that's true. Hello, Michelle. Hello, everybody. Oh, Kasia. <laughs> uh, hi. I have a question. I'm very curious how um, having your own uh, private life and a partner and a baby and a farm, but also running Kumari, how do you combine these two? How much are you actually involved in, uh, in what is happening in the co-living? 
Yeah, so obviously I don't live at Kumari, and I think some women expect me to be living here too, but I, you know, I don't, I live on near my farm. So um, I, what I do is I just um, plan events every week, several times a week, whether it's um, a learning event outside of the house, a learning event, or like cultural event, because it is always learning, or food inside the house, or just me coming to work here at the house too, and then, um, checking in on everyone and then I have a neighbor that comes to the house too that helps take care of the house so she's here several times a week mm -hmm. and it has a nice flow I was worried that the women would need me more but they actually just form their own community so fast that I there's been tears at the kitchen table real quick when different groups come in there's a lot of support and bonding there's been women that have been here and lost their job while they were here there's been ones that had breakups there's you know moms there and everyone just comes to the kitchen table and just kind of works it out and then they all are so busy Cassia that they like are just they want to just relax when it's their time off they don't need things all day they're so busy the women that are here are um very dedicated to whatever project they're part of, whether it's a personal project or um, something they signed on as a contract, corporate contract, mm -hmm. they're busier than I thought they were gonna be. So um, it works, they, they don't mm -hmm. need a lot. Yeah, they're, they're really easy going, honestly. Beautiful, thank Good. you. <laughs> yeah. Are there any people in the, in the audience that would like yes. to uh, build up a project that, like this one? No, no, I have a question. <laughs> Everyone would like to be, I, I would love to build a project like this, huh? hopefully in the future. Let's make one in Como, Virgin. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess in Como, maybe we will have also to, uh, to, to plan some weddings. And that's kind yeah. of the, the deal. That we have too many already, <laughs> exactly. something different. I actually have a, a guest that stayed with us for a month and a half. Um, she's, she is looking at properties in Como at the moment to possibly extend Kumari there. So either you or her, you all can work together because she's, she's very interested. Another woman, um, from Zurich is considering it, a Swiss woman, um, that stayed here the last month. Um, she, she was just saying like, you know, this is exactly what I would want if she stepped away from corporate career, um, as well as an American. So it's out there yeah so in in this scenario uh, sorry david you had another question yeah just to just to are you franchising kumari is that the plan um, well it wasn't the plan initially um because we just didn't know you know we're the first house like this in europe or maybe even larger than europe to be what we are exactly um, but now it is something that we are talking to our advisors about because of what the feedback has been from the women and the interest that it's, and it makes sense to me too, when one woman actually said it to me, but if this was in another place and I was like, yeah, you know, if someone told me in Beijing, a woman was running a house where there'd be other women traveling and working, and then that person would help me connect with the Beijing local culture. I'd, I'd be there. I'd obviously stay at that house in Beijing. That would make me so much more excited and comfortable to learn a culture that might be more obscure than what I'm used to, such as Sicily, but also even if it was, I don't know, in Split, like that would still be exciting to me. But then I, I really thought about it in Beijing for some reason. And that because Elizabeth and I have been to Beijing together. It's a rough city, but if you had a place like this there, that would just be so easy to book it. And that's kind of what I say about Kumari is we take away all the things you have to figure out and all the research. It just makes it faster to book. The women just are like, do, do, do. Okay, got it. Done. Um, so yes, I, is the answer. I think it's a great <laughs> idea to franchise. Yeah. My, my thought is it's, it makes complete sense to franchise it. You're just going to have to uh, build a franchise structure because if, for example, the people that come live with you and they're gonna and they're thinking about doing it on their on their own. If they're gonna build it up on their own, they're just gonna do their own thing, right? So 
Yeah, I've, we've talked uh, about that it would be Kumari. Thank you, David. If you ever want to give any advice, I'm talking <laughs> to someone else as well that has some franchising background because it's very new to me. Um, Elizabeth and I bootstrapped several companies ourselves and always did it ourselves. So it's very totally, new to get yeah. other people involved, but I can't expand Kumari on my own. I'm okay with saying that. So I definitely would only, only be able to do it with partnerships. So, um, and, and there is this need, you know, Oddly enough, the void this fills was filled in Italy in the past by convents. They would have rooms for traveling women to sleep at the convent for that safety aspect. There's one in Venice that might still operate, but there aren't these anymore. And also modern women like myself, we don't want to stay in a convent like it's cute for a day or so, but we want real life, right? The women yeah. here throwing back the wine, it's normal. So. This is weird to me because I'm not a religious person that we're kind of filling a void that the Catholic Church used to play a role, but it's important because again, the statistics of the violence against women is still so high and women are aware of it now more than ever thanks to social media, the Me Too movement, all these things that they still want to travel and they don't want to be scared. And so this is one, one option less of, you know, I stayed in a co-living place for example, in the past, a very popular one, but there was a lot of parties and there was a gentleman knocking on my door late at night. And I, I, I liked him as a friend, but I didn't wanna to have to have that interaction. You know what I mean? So this is like that space where you can go and party, but when you come home, home is different. And a lot, most of the women here, 90% are single. So they're going on dates, they're using Tinder, they're going out, but then they come home and they like that home is just, this place, you know? So I don't know, it's quite unique. It's been interesting to watch it unfold with the women and because they've been multi-generational and different cultures, it's been very interesting to see where they're very similar in so many aspects of what they like and why they're saying it Kamadi. Perfect, totally agree. Thanks, Michelle. Great. Nice. And uh, I was curious, uh, Michelle, about uh, what you said before, and we have one minute left, is that, True, Kate, that it means that, that I mean, we have no, to no, wrap no. it Wait. up. No, 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 We have one minute left. I mean, I said the Officially. event was going to be, I, I mean, I said the event was going to be until seven because Michelle has gazillion and 500 things to do. So if she's happy to stay a little bit longer, then fine. I am happy to stay a little bit longer as usual to then network in and socialize, but I also don't want to steal too much time with Michelle. So up to her. I can let the kindergarten know I'm, I'm busy a few more minutes. It's fine. No, it's fine. I'm good. Okay, let's let's uh, steal other five minutes maybe from you, Michelle, if that's, that's yeah. all right. Uh, Nicola, you had a question. Hi, Michelle. Uh, thank you uh, for sharing your story and uh, your project. It's uh, really impressive. Uh, I was just wondering, like you mentioned before, that you funded everything yourself or did you also receive uh, help from investors or are there certain grants in Italy that can help uh, with the development? Uh, yeah, cur curious to, to hear more about the financing and, and if there is mm -hmm. anything that you could share. Uh, yeah, um, well, I, I have owned my own business in the past for, for 10 years with my business partner, Elizabeth, who's on here. And we, we were fortunate enough by some grace of the world that we sold our business a few years ago um, for a profit. So we owned it for 10 years and we were able to sell. And so I used that money as the seed money to purchase Kumari and renovate Kumari. So um, traditional way for me has been to bootstrap. Um, I'm not familiar, honestly, with government funds. I'm not European as well. So it's even more... Um, outside my box. Um, but again, we do have bigger projects moving forward to either expand Kumari and the rural project. And so this is where we will be getting more into um, financial support from the outside community 100%. Um, we have to, so, and we, we want to do these things. We believe in these things. So, um, but up until now, it's been lots of years of hard and stressful work. Elizabeth would say too, we've, we worked in 18 different countries um, working on the road and um, some days you know the business did well and some days it didn't but the end we, we did all right and so I used that money to seed this. 
Awesome. Thanks. Please let me know if you one day would consider to, to uh, open something in Sardinia. More than happy to help. Ah, awesome. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. Uh, well, I had one last question, maybe before you go, go. <laughs> uh, Michelle, thank you so much again for, for all your insights and, and precious time that you get dedicated to us. Um, you said at some point that you wouldn't like uh, your uh, your guests to stay too long because you don't think that's the uh, idea uh, of what you are proposing. Um, what do you think is the um, tipping point on you know like when 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 is not Kumari is is not your place mm -hmm. anymore? Is it because? Um, it's uh, it's it's a place to find um, find safety for a few months, and then when you're sort of like uh, uh, grown up in the in the neighborhood, you sort of leave. Uh, could you tell us more yeah. on what what you're thinking there? <clears throat> I'd say, well, it's interesting because we have people already planning to come back again next year. So people like want some Sicilian life. It's not really Kumari, but they want to live in Sicily. But Sicily is not a necessarily an easy place to live. Sicily is quite chaotic and um, you can't really plan things and slow and all these things. And then for so many reasons, it's amazing. So I think people like to dip their toe in the Sicilian culture for a little while. And I would say that's why the three months is really that time that you could culturally immerse. You can do your Italian lessons and maybe some Sicilian lessons too, um, and really get into the culture. And because the island is so diverse too, I think usually people want to not just do day trips out of Catania, but then go see other parts of the island as well. Um, so it's not really that I think Kumari expires. It's just more so that, that what I've seen is that they, they just want to live in Sicily or in Catania for a certain period and then go back or come back to once a year to Catania is what I'm hearing from my guests is then they're planning to come back. We already have our first guest. She was from the Canary Islands. She's planning to come back already for February. So, um, uh, I, I think just personally, I'd like us to have a rolling um, community, not just one person that always lives here because it is a small house. And I think everyone contributes in their own way to the community and the house and the network of Kumari that we're building. So um, it's just a personal preference. If someone wants a long-term rental, that's, that's also here in Catania and Airbnb or something like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> All right, I'd it's say another round of applause. Yes. Uh, thank thank you. you, Michelle. Thanks. I see a lot of things in the chat and I know once we we close this, I won't be able, right? It all closes down, is that no, right? No, 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 like, hold on, hold okay. on everybody. <laughs> I'll teach you all how to save the chat. Ooh. So you open your chat next to file. There are three little dots. If you click on the dots, it says a save chat. Okay. So we leave it open for everybody. There's no secrets in here. You can talk to each other. You should be able to uh, to save your chat. Okay. Have you been able to? Otherwise, we'll send you. Chat saved. Okay. Lovely. There you go. All done. And Great. this is for everybody else as well, obviously. Thank, thank you, everyone who attended this. It's really nice to talk about something that has been really hard work during a really crazy time of pandemic and motherhood for the first time. Um, so it's really nice. This is my first time actually speaking outside of our guests of what is going on at Kumadi really. So thank you all for attending and for my supporters of my digital nomad ladies from the past, the OG crew for showing up too. It's really nice. Thank you so much. Actually, I actually started crying at the beginning of this when I saw their faces because I didn't know they'd be here. So quite, quite a, Happy, thank you all. Nice, thank you very much, uh, Michelle. <laughs>